Hello, China. Hi. Good to see you. Good to see you too. And welcome to uh, Café Mellemfolk. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess thank you. <laughs> mm-hmm. And we are sitting here today because uh, we're talking about social injustice yeah. that people with a non-Western background experience here in mm-hmm. Aarhus, yep. Denmark. And um, yeah, you have a very special relationship to this place. Yeah. Could you tell me a bit more about yourself and of course. your relationship? So, I, you know me before, but like, uh, I'm a volunteer here in MS uh, since I actually moved back to Aarhus because I was living in the UK before, uh, Denmark, UK, and then moved back to Aarhus. And uh, uh, that was in uh, 2019, January. And then by an uh, event MS have organized, I got to know MS and they were back at the dome at that time. And then the minute I was there, everyone was so like kind of helpful. It was uh, a dinner, or an iftar, basically for Ramadan. Mm-hmm. And that was the first time in my life that I actually know or sense that someone that is not uh, from the Middle East or not non-Muslim actually knows what Ramadan is and have organized like uh, this kind of iftar. So I was like, I want to know those people. I want to know this place. And I asked, and they told me that uh, we are like Manifold Klees and Virke, and we welcome everyone. And that was much about it. And since 2019, August, I was part of MS. Uh, I was first behind the bar, not in here, but in the dump. And it was uh, really nice. And then I got to be more active, and most, like, I can sum it up in like a short way saying that I uh, MS gave me a platform to actually express myself and not to be ashamed of me being from the Middle East not thinking twice before saying that I am a I'm Haya I'm from Syria mm-hmm. it was very empowering mm-hmm. and still I'm a still volunteer with them until now but not as active as I would like to be mm-hmm. but uh, yeah. yeah so uh, yeah, it's, it's good support. It is, it is, and it's one of the places in Aarhus that I actually feel that I can be whoever I want. I can be whatever I want. I'm not gonna be judged. They're not mm-hmm. gonna, you know, they're not gonna box me. They're not gonna have those prejudgment of who I am just because I was born in a certain place on mm-hmm. this earth. Yeah, they don't have this pre images of who I am. Yeah. So it's that was very nice. It's uh, like I I can go on and on about mm. MS. <laughs> it's good to have that kind of uh, fiery energy for something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But can you tell me a bit more about? Um, so you're not from here. You're from Syria. Yeah, I'm from Syria. I am from Aleppo, as, mm. uh, the second biggest city. I moved out of Syria in uh, 2013 because of the uh, revolution that happened there. And uh, we had to move because my family doesn't have a very good relationship with the government, so there was a threat. Mm. Uh, I moved first with my family through different countries, so Lebanon, Turkey, and Egypt. And then after that, decided to move to Turkey, lived there for about a year. That's 2014 until 2015. And then moved here to Denmark. And it was a... (laughs) It was actually, I didn't choose Denmark as a country itself. I heard about it before. I heard about how free they are in here, of course, and uh, how uh, you can do whatever you want. You can say whatever you want and you will, you will always, you like, you like basically you can say whatever you want. You can do whatever you want. No one would tell you like you cannot do this or that there is people are not scared Mm. so that was uh, my idea about what Denmark is when I first moved in here and I must say that I kind of was a bit uh, shocked after four years of living in here (laughs) or so on I uh, I moved in 2015 and then I was studying in a university in English and then uh, it was always hard in the beginning I was living in Horsens after the refugee camp, and that is also another long story. It takes a year to get a resident permit. Mm. So I lived in northern part of Denmark, Mm -hmm. uh, in the middle of nowhere. Mm -hmm. And that was a very, uh, like, very 
I actually was very depressed when I was there. Yeah. So, anyways, uh, it's gone. Mm. And I'm happy to hear that. <laughs> it's gone. It's gone. It was one of the worst places I have been in my life. Yes. Like, psychologically and physically. Okay, yeah, I can imagine. So, it's not... Uh, yeah. And then when I moved, when I cut my resident permit, I was counted as a person, not as a number anymore. Yay! Okay. Basic human rights. <laughs> nice. Yeah. <laughs> I was considered a person, finally. So I had the ability to leave the camp and maybe start a life if I want to. So I chose to go to Horsens because I knew a person who was studying there in English in mm -hmm. VA University. And I moved there and I, the first thing I got was my supervisor or from the job center who she told me I cannot study in Denmark. And that is why she said like, you need to wait, you need to learn the language and all this. And I have a, like, when I came to the, I speak English very good since I was a kid. So I was like, but my friend is studying in English. And then she's like, no, you cannot. People don't do that in Denmark and you cannot, you are here. You need to work, you need to uh, go. I, she was very mean, I would say. And anyways, I didn't listen and started my university and yeah. Uh, during my stay in Horsens, it's a very small town back then. Mm -hmm. And there was lots of internationals, but they would all go in uh, during Easter or Christmas or so on. And then the city would turn into a ghost city because I didn't have any Danish friends. I didn't have any Danish community. Of course, I tried. I tried to volunteer. It's, uh, I, I volunteered with the uh, Divisionary kit Cooking, which was mm -hmm. very nice. But still, at the same time, there wasn't any kind of inclu inclusion. Okay. Yeah, like, it's really hard in a small city. Yeah. So I decided that I would like to try myself somewhere else. And that was in the UK. And I was like, okay, went to the UK. And it was nice. Everyone there is very open, very open-minded. But I guess I really liked Denmark <laughs> for some reason with all of this. It mm. felt right for me to be there. So, so you came back? I came back to Aarhus. To Aarhus. Yes. And here in Aarhus, I decided that, you know what? If if I don't like some things, I'm going to talk about it. And I'm going to change I'm, I'm gonna change where I am. Mm. I don't want to change the whole world. I cannot mm -hmm. do that as a person. Mm -hmm. But I can change my own world. Mm -hmm. And that's uh, when, and then I crossed path with the MS. Mm -hmm. And then there, we kind of, we did lots of activism. We, I did lots of talks. Uh, my goal was just to make people aware that people like me are just human. Mm. Like, they we're just human that uh, life brought us to Denmark because of, let's, in my case, it was the revolution. But I am in the end, I'm not just a number. Mm -hmm. I'm a human with a statue, which is a refugee statue. Mm -hmm. And I'm here as a political refugee. Mm -hmm. I cannot be in my country, mm -hmm. even if I wanted to. And like and that's that's how the world work i am here i'm gonna i know that i'm gonna be good to this country i'm gonna give my all and that's what i'm doing and thank you for that <laughs> i love how you say i'm here to create awareness yeah. um how do you feel like you're um how do you want to shift the awareness here in Aarhus? yeah have you experienced some stuff um or like some social injustices with regards to all of what we're talking about like your background uh, everything that shapes you as a human being yeah. and the story that you have to tell yes I can tell you like a small story a couple of stories that are the same that it's it would always be something like I am sitting around with my friends in a bar in a cafe anywhere and then some curious person would come to see all these international who are sitting together and then they would go in a circle around asking where are you from and stuff like that and then it comes to me and then they look at me and then they be like, oh, you're Spanish, oh, you're Italian or something like that. And I'm like, no, I'm from Syria. And then at that minute, I can see their faces changing. It's like I gave them a shock or I gave them like, no, I cannot be from Syria. And that is because of the media, the, like the pre-image they have about a refugee, I, like about a person from Syria, that it's either that person is a refugee and they are here to steal the government money or like to steal like you know kind of to be on social help to be more specific or uh, just a woman who's uh, sitting in her place cooking and cleaning 24 7 
Mm. And that is not it. They look at me and then be like, no, you cannot be from Syria. Or, so are you a Muslim? Why aren't you wearing hijab? Why are you drinking? All these kind of pre-images, boxing, uh, yeah. stereotyping. stereotyping about like why why should i think twice before saying i'm from syria why should i feel that oh if i say now i'm from syria they that the whole conversation is gonna change into oh how could you be from syria mm. what mm. like why should why should it be so strange why should it be so unnatural yeah like it's another country for yeah. god's sake it's and those this whole thing like countries and borders we created them yes exactly but is there also then maybe uh, some kind of narrative going on a- about Syrians here in Denmark that is then totally not true or representing Syrian culture? I would say representing Middle Eastern people in general, not mm. just Syrian. I don't want to just uh, specify Syrians. Mm-hmm. Uh, I read it in the media uh, like all the time. I'm not saying the media needs to be more positive or more negative. Or like the, p- the media just highlights all the bad stories. Just and I know that people clicks on the negative news more and news like the media needs to work so that's why that they're doing mm, that. Mm-mm. But honestly, it's easier to make people hate rather than love, and we don't need that anymore. Mm. I'm not saying that the media needs to be more positive. Just don't just be neutral, you know. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Don't don't just go around hunting for the bad news. If you want to hunt for a good news, you can find one. If you want to hunt for a bad news, you're gonna find one as well. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's just about being. Just take what you what you get. I have been here doing talks for two years, and we try to contact Danish media. We try to contact Danish uh, uh, newspaper for the Morea campaign, for other campaigns, and no one responds. Respond responded. No one did that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. No one. No, like. Especially with MS, and it, I wasn't the one who's writing, of course. It was my Danish, my Danish friend with the Danish name and everything. It's just, it's mm. not very juicy. No. No. So how does all of this make you feel, like, as a human being here in Aarhus? I think it's, uh, it makes me feel a bit that uh, the world is unfair, mm. because I didn't choose some things in my life, but I am... I am not a very negative person at the same time. I'm a very optimistic person, so Mm-mm-mm. I'm like... I, I'm not gonna let this affect me. I'm gonna go out, I'm gonna meet people. And you know what? Every time I meet a person, a Danish person, or a person who had those uh, stereotype images or pre-judgment, they would meet me and they would be like, oh, but not all of them are like that. Yeah, you're, you're actually a good, you're a good person. <laughs> yeah, and I, I know like in like Danish people, like in every country there is a good, like good and bad. And oh. I don't know what's going on with this table. No, it's a bit shaky. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, can you please continue? <laughs> I will. So, uh, in every place, there is the good and there is the bad. And I'm not saying that all of my culture or all of my, the people from Syria or from the Middle East are very nice and that all of them are good. But at the same time, not all the people in Denmark are good or bad. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's like, there is racist, but there is people who are open-minded. I mm-hmm. have acquainted a lot of people, especially like the Mess, who is the organizer of this, uh, the, like the volunteer organizer of MS. He's the most open Danish person I have met. And like, for some time, I feel a bit sad that lots of people say, well, Mess is not Danish. No, he is. He is Danish. He's just been around a lot Mm -hmm. but he's still Danish to me and he when I look at him I see that there is like you know there's still hope there's Mm -hmm. still something good Mm -hmm. and it's not just mess it's the people who I work with in the office it was very that's also something it was very hard for me to actually because I heard lots of things about when I want to apply for a job maybe I should change my name maybe I shouldn't say that I speak Arabic in the CV maybe I shouldn't do that because they will not just take me in so and I got there is I applied for 45 offices around Aarhus and Copenhagen in uh, before the corona and I got a respond from two Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and the last one is my working place now where I went there Uh, they told me they're not hiring because of corona but I like kind of pushed in to go and be like 
well, I want to have an interview. Wow, that's your personality. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Just like, I can be an intern, I can be anything. And then uh, Frederick, the guy who was uh, responsible, like the office chef, he was there and he listened and he, I was like, I want to work and I want to do this and that. And they were all very much like surprised and but not not in a bad way not in a, in the way that they would give me a look oh but you're from Syria no no it's what they were like yes we want you here yes come in mm-hmm. you're part of Sebra you're gonna you you fit in here mm-hmm. and Sebra is an international office and the good thing is I think I think why they they understood me is that they have a place in the Middle East they work in Abu Dhabi so but this is very interesting because I can see some patterns of what you said uh, between what you said about um the guy you were referring to as uh, being around more mm-hmm. the danish person he's still danish yeah but yeah he is just around more cultures and people exactly and then the company being international as well yeah so i'm wondering what's your opinion on what the deeper underlying issues are that is uh, be- becoming an obstacle uh, I, in this whole story in this issue that we're i talking think it's about. just not knowing yeah because people are scared from the things that they don't know. Hmm. 90% of the times, I think, I believe, that's my personal opinion. When people go out, meet each other, when they see that, you know, there is, when they see the media is highlighting, there is this event that happened, something happened there, it's all just, everything is on our heads, right? Mm -hmm. If we always hear that Middle Eastern people are gonna Sorry for saying that, but they're going to be terrorists or they're going to bomb somewhere. We're always going to be scared of the Middle Eastern people. We're always going to be scared of Muslim people. But when we see that this is just this is just like one part of it, maybe even not a huge part. When there is news more about like, oh, there is a talk about let's learn more about how is it to be a refugee. Let's see other people, you know, empathy. If there was more empathy, if uh, there is more things to do, if there was more local community Mm. that kind of include the international, if there was more organized work. There is lots of NGOs in Aarhus, a lot. Mm -hmm. And I have worked with some of them. But there is always this miscommunication that's going in between. Everyone wants to, you know, kind of, everyone goes on the things that they they want to achieve. But there is always this missing piece that we are actually all working for one big goal. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I think there should be more just, more organizing, more including for people. Maybe, I don't know, a local newspaper highlighting a person each uh, month or like holding of course now it's corona and it's difficult but i'm not talking about just the corona times mm-hmm. i'm talking like also in the way back i have like there is facebook groups but the facebook groups for internationals have only the danish people who are married to an international mm. or have acquainted one exactly there okay. is a very very little awareness mm-hmm. about the international community. Mm-hmm. 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 And that is really sad. I think that is the biggest issue in Aarhus yes. specifically. It's just uh, some kind of segregation going on or a I, division. What is the correct word? Uh, I think like segregation, it could be like a very big word. I would say I, even that division, I don't think that's like a planned division that people want to divide uh, themselves or each other. I think more it's it's just in our human nature, kind of. I mean, you cannot just blame the media or say that this is all, we need to do this and that. It's more about the way that we grew up. Of course, when I was mm-hmm. living in Syria, mm-hmm. I also didn't know anything about European people. Mm-hmm. I didn't know. Yes, it makes sense. Yeah. You just focus on your own local uh, culture and community. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, yeah, it's also, uh, it doesn't make sense to point fingers because we're all no. just human and exactly. trying to live our lives here. Precisely. Uh, without having, like, these negative intentions. No, no. And also, I think it's important to note that the Danish culture is also um, uh, different, maybe, than other European cultures. Um, I, maybe. Would s- I would say so. Or Scandinavian cultures uh, in terms of, like, I have, for example, I'm, al- I'm also not from here. I'm, I'm Dutch. Yeah. But um, I can see that uh, people are a bit more introverted in Scandinavia. Yeah. So that I can 
respect that. Of course, there's nothing wrong with that. No. But then it's also harder sometimes to break those barriers sometimes um, if you're an international uh, trying to... Yeah. But then, of course, there's extroverted Danes, so I'm not try trying no, to stereotype no, no, them no, no, as well. No, 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 of course, of course. But it's definitely a culture, cultural... Um, the cultural clashes sometimes yes. unintentionally they just clash yes yes i agree with you and i experienced the same thing when i was living in the uk because when i, w I was living in manchester mm -hmm. for like eight months and then i could kind of see that people are more comfortable when there is a, a middle eastern around or a girl with hijab around or they wouldn't actually you wouldn't feel tension in the environment so i would say that in denmark in general it's much more less, the people are much more less used for internationals. Mm. And then now with the, like the politics now, I mean, if you look at the US politics, it's it's like, I'm getting US because it's a big, like, you know, powerful country. Yes. So <laughs> Trump won the, his election based on hatred. You can gather more votes yes. based on Fas hatred. Fascism, <laughs> for sure. Yeah. So. The thing is, it's all connected in such ways, but I do believe that the new generation is much more aware. I mean, if you, th if you just don't take this, just the social injustice, take, for example, the environment, take other subjects, you can see that now actually the young people are asking, well, we need our environment to be more green. We need less CO2 commission. We need, we need this and we need that. And they are actually pushing mm -hmm. the politicians to change. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's just like going back to the fact that when we educate, when we make the people aware of things, of you know being more empathetic, understanding that sometimes people don't have choice. I didn't choose to be born in Syria. I didn't choose for the revolution to happen. I didn't choose to go all. I went through like through death to come to Denmark. It wasn't an easy ticket plane to come here. It wasn't no, like that. It wasn't by choice. No. And it's not, and my only choice actually to come here to Denmark to be accepted, for example, as a, a person in Denmark, is to actually go through the sea in a boat with 50, 50 more people on a, like a rubber boat, not even like, don't think about those huge boats and yachts, no, no, no. And that is, wasn't the worst part of the trip. Going from Greece, coming to Austria, this whole going through those countries, Serbia, Macedonia, and uh, Hungary, and like going through all this between walking and taking buses and trains and trying to smuggle yourself until you arrive to this country. And then when you arrive to this country, they look at you and be like, why are you here? Yes. Well, if I didn't need to be here, I wouldn't go through debt to be here. Yes. That's the last thing that you want to hear after having yeah. such a, a trip that you did not choose for. No, um, no. I mean, the, like the trip was, taking the trip was my choice. Mm -hmm. Like it was, but it was a result of other things that influenced my life. Yes. And I don't regret it. I would take it a hundred times more. Mm -hmm. Even with all this hardship that I am, like, let's say, with some hardship that I face in my life, I would still come here and... Yes, there is some uh, very unfair things that's happening in Denmark. There's some things that when the thing, I think there's also another problem, which is I heard that, you know, how I told you in the beginning that I heard about Denmark, right? A free country, pe like you can say whatever you want, but there is one thing, there is a lot of, uh, unknowing you know like if we don't talk about things that means they're not there no social injustice is not there ruining the planet or ruining the environment is like is there we just need to talk about it mm -hmm. sexism is there mm -hmm. everything is there we just need to talk about it we need to bring it to the surface and we need to accept that it's there mm -hmm. and it's solvable exactly we can change it we need to acknowledge it first yes before we can move on yeah Yes. Exactly, and that is the whole thing. Yeah. I think it's... Uh, and if you feel like now you don't... Uh, so now you feel like it's not being acknowledged as much? Or? No, I don't think so. I yes. mean, it's it's acknowledged in between the NGOs and people mm -hmm. who are interested mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. these kind of things. Mm -hmm. But people who don't 
you know, there is this thing, you have to go to fish for the information. Mm. Like, the information is not there. Mm -hmm. And even if you hear about it, they would say, it's a hocus pocus, it's not there. This is all just... Wow. Yes, I can see that that's an issue. If we pretend that it's not there, then we can also not create a solution for the problems that we're facing. Yeah. But do you feel like something is happening already that is creating change momentum here at least? Like yeah, yeah. I mean, with the marches, with the you know with the uh, environment like with the green week that sometimes happens with the, the uh, uh, with the parade you know with mm -hmm. the like with all those events that is kind of going on into the street and seeing people walking uh, shouting saying what the things that they believe in mm -hmm. this is kind of I see people coming out of the... I've been on so many marches, so I see people coming out of their stores and looking at us and be like, what are you do? Like, what are you doing? And people like... But still, there is many things still to do. And of course, it's not a change that's going to be done mm -hmm. in one day or one year. Mm -hmm. It's it's a change that is going to be... This is what we are doing now. It's not like what... I, like even me, what I'm doing now, it's not for me. It's for the generation yet to come. It's for the people who are going to come later. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's the same thing. We we are just sitting in here, working, trying, being activists, spending time actually to sit and talk and be like telling our stories just to kind of feel like the world is not the thing that we see in t on TV. The world is the humans that we see in the streets. We need mm -hmm. to go there and we need to learn those stories from them, mm -hmm. not from whatever TV is telling us. Mm -hmm. So the solidarity is important and the representation exactly yeah. yeah so so i'll see i'll see you on the streets soon, <laughs> see as soon as everything opens up again yes yes of <laughs> course and that's like because of corona it's yeah. uh, it's all just uh, yeah i saw that there was going to be a march uh, somewhere at, at the at, i think the women's march but yeah. that got cancelled of course yes yes it got cancelled yeah yeah but, but there is also the, I think there is a virtual kind of event on the 20th of uh, March mm -hmm. for the International uh, Refugee Day. So, wow. Okay, yeah, I'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> to support it's, uh, you. it's in Copenhagen, Aarhus and uh, in Odense. Nice. And it's very nice. I was very surprised that they're actually doing something this year. Mm -hmm. And yeah, uh, I will be also giving a small talk about the Syrian uh, people mm -hmm. like how some stuff like in Denmark is happening so mm -hmm, mm -hmm. just I don't know try to like engage more <laughs> yes engage more people and, and have those conversations exactly and like I think I already every time I'm with my friends or you know we're having something like a coffee or beer or anything we would sit and then we would talk about everything and it all leads back to the fact that what's happening in this world how can we change yes yeah. that's just the first step that we need to take exactly just even talk talking about and listening. it listening <laughs> yeah exactly talking yeah. about it on a beer yes. i know it's a huge subject and it's a very fat subject and it's not the most fun one mm. but it doesn't need to be that serious mm -hmm. it doesn't it it doesn't need to be like i'm sitting in here and i'm we need it's not all negative it's mm -hmm. not i don't think so i mm -hmm. like people always sometimes are scared of asking what uh, how did you come to Denmark? Do you really want to talk about it? Oh yes, I want to talk about it. Yes, I want to say it. Mm -hmm. I want everyone to know how how is it to be in Denmark? How is it to be in Aarhus? How yes, Aarhus, I have like Aarhus have gave me a lot. MS Aarhus have gave me MS, and MS gave me a platform to actually go out and talk. Oh, MS have gave me the people that's gonna listen to me. So there is the good and there is the bad i just need to kind of see the half full cup of everything yeah oh. yeah <laughs> well i think uh, we've had such a nice conversation <laughs> thank you very and, much um yeah thank you for sharing your story and uh, anytime <laughs> <laughs> definitely put it in my calendar <laughs> yeah i think it's great that you give such clear examples of uh of what is needed and yeah. how we can change this um yeah. And it starts just here already. Yeah. yeah. But, well, <laughs> thank you for inviting me. It was nice meeting you in person. Thank you.